Hello, welcome to Voice in the Alexander Technique. I'm Allison Taylor, and today we're going to talk about big magic. We're actually going to talk about practicing and putting aside a time for yourself for self care, but I call this practice big magic. New students often ask me how to start integrating this work into their daily lives. Or they'll come into lessons saying, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't have a chance to practice. I didn't do my constructive rest this week. They're very sheepish. But when we start to discuss it and get to the bottom of what's, what that resistance is about, the biggest resistance is time. I didn't have time. I couldn't find the time to do my lying down work. I just couldn't find the time to practice. And I respect that we are adults. We have adult lives and we have adult routines and maybe you're someone who relies on a schedule. I'm someone who really likes to have a schedule. And so a few years ago, I read this book by Elizabeth Gilbert called Big Magic, Creative Living Beyond Fear. I highly recommend it for anyone who's a creative person, a creator, um, or if you just want to get some inspiration for integrating some new change into your life. This is a great book. So in this book, Elizabeth Gilbert talks about making time for inspiration, uh, making time for creativity listening to inspiration, following through when that inspiration strikes. And I could really relate to that. And for me, I started to transform my practicing into something that could create space for inspiration. And I call this hour Big Magic Hour. I even have it scheduled into my iCal as a recurring event. Um, so it looks something like this. In my iCal, there are different times each day that can be moved around students and dental appointments and classes that I teach and classes I attend. And it's called Big Magic Hour. I encourage you to get creative with emojis, um, create a brand new calendar for this event, um, with a color that you really like. In my calendar, I chose purple. And it stands out every day as this oasis in my day where I'm setting aside time to practice. And for you, that practice might include singing or Alexander technique or acting, running lines or movement. But there's some really important things that set this kind of practice apart from other types of practice. So I turn off all electronic devices unless I'm using them to play a video that I'm practicing along with. But otherwise, I move my phone to a different room. I set a timer on my iPad for at least 10 minutes, if that helps you, to have a time frame where you know I've set aside this time to practice. We're gonna use practice to mean any different number of things for you. And I will just use this time to see what comes. So for me, that could be journaling. That could be um, writing in my creative project journal where I keep track of projects that I'd like to work on. These could be upcoming workshops that I've already planned. Um, it could be just ideas of workshops that I'd like to do, dream ideas. Oh, I'd love to travel to South America and conduct a whole week long uh, intensive of movement and singing and breath. And here's what that might look like. I might not have plans to do this in the near future or even like the means to do that right now, but it's this is time during Big Magic Hour is set aside to dream and see what inspiration comes. Your Big Magic Hour might include singing and that might be working on specific repertoire but it might also just be lying on your back on the floor or sitting in a comfortable seat and just having hands on your own body and letting your breath inform the kind of practice you're going to have that day. So often we rush and we cram things into the schedule. By having this recurring event in your calendar, 
it will alert you to, oh yeah, this is, this is my time. And I guarantee you'll feel differently coming out of that time than you did going into it. I've often heard that the hardest part is just getting on the mat if you have a yoga practice or getting on your back on the floor if you're doing constructive rest or Alexander Technique lying down or coming to the piano or coming to your keyboard app on your iPad to practice singing. It's the hardest part just getting started. So help yourself out by having this event already set aside in your calendar so that you never schedule inside that event. You can move the time around each day um, around clients or students or other engagements that you have, but you always keep this time every day of the week. For me, it's every weekday. For you, maybe it's going to be Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Find what works best for your schedule, but keep this appointment with yourself. It's really important. The other important thing is to not be too hard on yourself if you don't fill the full hour. So you might think, oh my gosh, I only did 20 minutes today. Well, I gotta make sure I do 40 minutes tomorrow. That actually has the reverse effect of making you get more done. It's a punishment, right? And you don't wanna turn your practice and your self-reflection and self-connection time into a punishment. So if you're only able to do 20 minutes, you only got through 20 minutes on one day, do less time the next day. I know it sounds insane, but I guarantee having this outlook will improve your, the usefulness of this time for you. So if you only did 20 minutes one day, aim for 10 minutes the next day. Increase your chances of success. So big magic hour. Thanks to Elizabeth Gilbert, writer of Big Magic, Creative Living Beyond Fear. Thank you for your inspiration. And put that into your calendar, put that into your schedule, make it a repeating event, pick a cute color and a cute emoji that you enjoy, and decide ahead of time what types of things you can fill this time with so that you're not locked into one activity, but you can really just use your space to inspire you. You might want to draw, you might want to just breathe, you might want to sound or engage in some creative movement with sounding. And let me know how you 